Hello everyone, Sebastian Lacido here, <clears throat> and welcome to Headlines and Prophecy. This week we're going to talk about the Great Reset, or you may have heard of it as the New World Order. It's basically a, a social, world, economic, uh, legal, educational, um, health system that is imposed on the world. And, and it's nothing new. Uh, if you go back to Plato, uh, he was talking about social engineering and society. When you look at, uh, at our nation and our country in the modern times, uh, we see this beginning really with the United Nations uh, formation under President Woodrow Wilson back in, I think it was 1913. And then we see at FDR, he used the term New, New World Order, where the government began to provide many benefits, maybe many social benefits uh, uh, through uh, Social Security and health care and many other things where the government was taking care of the citizens. Under George Bush one, he used the word uh, uh, New World Order in several speeches. And in his speeches, he was talking about sovereign nations joining together to enforce good in the world. And it was sort of uh, us working together against, at that time, it was Saddam Hussein, where the world came together in coalitions. We began, we began to see even, even Israel with some of the Middle Eastern countries come together against a common enemy or a common cause. And so, but today's group is much different. It's, it's much, much different. Um, it's, it's a globalist in thinking. It's, it's laying aside your nationalism. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's packaged as an environmental plan, uh, but it, it goes much, much beyond that into a social, economic, um, you know, uh, social justice plan where the world operates and functions as one. And when you look at this, it's, it's not just some fringe group, it's mainstream. I think the most telling uh, example of this was when our current Pope came to the United States uh, a few years ago. He didn't talk about abortion, he didn't talk about gay marriage, he didn't talk about any of the, uh, any of the Catholic doctrine. His main speech, his main message when he was here was we need to save the planet, we need to take care of the planet that God gave us. Uh, we see that primarily most of the Democratic Party, not just the progressive side, this, this goes right into uh, even the moderate Democrats are, are more progressive in this, uh, the government being very big, right? And even going beyond big and giving up our sovereignty for a Green New Deal or uh, what they call a Great Reset. We see Prince Charles uh, in, in England giving a major speech. I think it was May of, of 2020. And I encourage you to Google some of this because as I was reading through a lot of this material, it was shocking to me just how broad this is. But President, uh, Prince Charles gave a speech uh, in which he you know, laid out uh, this new social uh, economic program that would bring parity uh, to citizens around the world uh, that most of the G7 has bought into this already. And here's the thing. Here's what we're feeling. We're feeling uh, this division uh, really because President Trump was an enemy of this. Under, under, under President Obama, John Kerry, who was Secretary of State from 2013 to 2017, in 2016 they signed what's called the Paris Accords. In the Paris Accords, there were certain carbon emission mandates and, and it, was a, it was a very large document that imposed global regulation on sovereign nations. In other words, nations agreed to give up their own sovereign regulations for this global regulations. It's packaged as an environmental program, but when you begin to look at it, it reached into our industries, right? Companies had to change the way they were doing things. They had to implement programs. They had to spend money. It cost us hundreds of billions, maybe trillions of dollars. And we know that it cost us about a million jobs. So this was subtly moving toward this great reset, this new world order, where the world would act as one through contractual ar arrangements uh, initially, and the agreements would dictate or demand or enforce global laws on sovereign nations. 
And so nations would begin to give up their sovereignty and relinquish it to the greater good of the world. Well, what happened was COVID came. And with COVID came this great opportunity uh, for several different reasons. Uh, one is it was global in nature. I think it was 187 nations now have had lockdowns and COVID and, and issues. And, and so it gave great opportunity to this group because economically, a lot of countries, while everyone is painting this uh, with a bright brush, um, at the end of the day, we're surviving through this and things are still moving along because of President Trump's economy, frankly. Europe is much is farther behind us. They're, in fact, as far as the 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 uh, virus is concerned, they're back in lockdown, and and so uh, some of their countries are still in 20% unemployment, and they are severely hurt. They may not ever come out of this, so it's the perfect opportunity to do a reset, right? And that reset is not just for the environment, but they're talk. You know, we're talking about open borders. We're talking about one world currency. We're talking, all of this is going on on the internet. I mean, we're so focused on the U.S. election. We're not seeing this in, in, in COVID. We're not seeing this stuff around the world. But this is why media, the political elites, big tech, business, and the seven pillars really have lined up uh, against Trump and against his thinking process because what was his, what was his theme? Make America great again, right? And that allowed us for religious and economic freedoms. Well, what gets caught up in all of this is this is an atheistic movement. At the end of the day, these people don't believe in God. They don't believe that God is or, or Jesus should be a part of our lives. In fact, we begin to see it eliminated from our schools. Well, as we give over more sovereignty to this world governing body, however this may come about, what we're actually doing is it's Satan's agenda, and it's really moving toward Babylon again. What did he do in Babylon? The world acted as one. He's been trying to get back there ever since. We see it through Egypt and Assyria and Babylon and the Medo-Persians, the Greeks and the Romans. We see these great societies be being built where the entire world came under one governing body uh, until God came in and broke it up. Now, after Jesus was on the earth 2,000 years ago, we've never seen a dominant power like this. We've seen groups try, like, for instance, Hitler tried, right, in, in back uh, trying to take over the world. But because of national sovereignty, uh, groups were able, to, nations were able to work together like we did in World War I and World War II, or work together in coalitions. Well, this is... A, a, a much different uh, spirit about it. This is, this is the cooperation of nations giving up their sovereignty for one world order. And it's packaged under the Green New Deal to save the planet, which we all live on. But it then goes into economics because the, 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 the environmental structure and regulations spill over into the economics. And then, it, then because of the economic problems that we're having and the central banks will have as we come out of COVID, whenever that happens, we begin to see it even moving into economics. So, you know, what is going on here is this is a forerunner of Antichrist and, uh, and his kingdom. We're seeing that the world is coming together. It's a spirit. Um, they are... You know, with Joe Biden uh, coming in, and, and there's still a pathway for President Trump to keep praying. But with Joe Biden coming in, or the next president like him coming in, we will run into this thing. I think that they're pulling all the stops out now. I mean, it, they are all working together. It's, you know, when do you ever see the media actually not, you know, publish news, hide news? When do you see the media do that? When do you see the media cut off? Uh, you know, the, the President of the United States' is press secretary. When do you see this? You know, this isn't the way our nation was founded and, and functions because we're the direct opposite of what they're trying to do. We are a great nation made up, of, uh, it's a democracy, it's a republic where we all have rights. Well, this group, their endeavor is that our rights be taken away. And the only way that happens uh, you know, as I see it today, 
is through economic hardship where everyone has to rely on the government and COVID has provided that opportunity. And, and so uh, when you look at it, it's been masterfully played uh, by Satan in, in bringing the world to its knees um, where we have to work together. And, uh, and because of that, I, you know, I see many, there's so many different end times sort of spinoffs of this. I'm going to be teaching on this on Saturday mornings. We're going to maybe take a break from our current series and move into uh, the One World Order. Uh, but what do we do with this? We pray. We speak up. Um, we pray. Uh, I mean, if President Trump loses here, um, Joe Biden, you know, uh, has this in his bones. It's in his DNA. But Kamala Harris, if she becomes president, and I, I think it's highly likely uh, that Biden will not survive his four years. Uh, his, I think his own party may take him out. Once Kamala Harris gets in there, she was handpicked by Obama and Soros. I believe that this thing is going to move into hyper gear and, um, and we're going to look completely different in a few years. The, the church is uh, is uh, moving into a strong headwind here because we're an enemy to this thinking process. Um, when, and, and, and we're beginning to see a division in the church because you have, you have churches siding with organizations, not the, not the title, but organizations like Black Lives, Matter, Black Lives Matter, which has this whole agenda on their website, right? Social uh, equality. And social justice and and reparation for the past and you know open borders and you know uh, defund the police I mean all of this is nonsense nonsense to a free and open society and and so uh, we need to fight this and, and the way to fight is in the prayer room it's in the voting booth uh, unfortunately this thing may be taken I believe it would be I believe there's fraud I just don't know if, if there's enough to turn around when I pray, I hear, uh, keep praying. I hear that, that that's our mandate to continue to pray. Uh, with God, everything is possible. Nothing is impossible. Um, I uh, encourage you to start watching us and join us at watchersoftruth.com. Follow us on Facebook and continue to get these updates every uh, Monday and, and uh, End Times teachings on Saturday and Bible teachings on Tuesday. And we're starting some other ministries. So with that, God bless you. Keep the faith. Love you guys. See you next week.